right? So Sayyid Muhammad, he studied uh, in Makkah al-Mukarramah with his father and with other scholars of Islam in Makkah al-Mukarramah. Then he went into uh, he, he went to Egypt where he furthered his studies in, uh, in, in, in the science of Hadith where he obtained a PhD from Al-Azhar University. Upon his return, he, he took the post of his father after his father's death. After his pa father passed away, the scholars of Makkah al-Mukarramah unanimously placed him in the seat of his father. They never placed him in the seat of his father just because he's his son. No, because he was qualified to take up that seat. Right? Because he was qualified to take up that seat. Imam al-Haddad radiallahu anhu, Imam al-Haddad radiallahu anhu, Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad, the great Gnostic and the great friend of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, one of the great awliya, one of the great scholars of Islam, <coughs> he says that he entered into a masjid one day, he entered into a masjid one day and he, he saw a person who everyone was watching. And this person had an imam on, he had a jubba on, and no one really knew him. He had a jubba on, an imam on, and no one really knew him. And he was dressed like the scholars. So the lay people, the normal people around, they were kind of reluctant. And no one's kind of saying anything to this new person. He's strange, we don't know him. But Imam al-Haddad, he was a great scholar of Islam, right? And he went over to this person and he gave him salam. And he said to the person, he said, so and so, um, so who are you? <coughs> he said to him, so who are you? Because we don't really know you in this locality. So who are you? Introduce yourself. And the person said to Imam al-Haddad, my father was such and such a scholar, my father was this, my father was that, my father was this, and my father was that. Imam al-Haddad said, hang on, is that your father? He said, yes. He said, mashallah, we know your father to be a scholar and a righteous person. Tell me about yourself now. He said, I know who your father is. I know your father was a scholarly man. I know your father was a righteous man. But who are you? And the man went silent. The man went silent. And Imam al-Haddad said to him, look, if you are not qualified for this post, then don't dress like the people of this post. Simple. If you are not qualified for this post, then don't dress like the people of this post, for then you will begin to deceive the people. Then you will begin to deceive the people, and people will come to you and rush to you, thinking you're a great scholar, maybe because your father was a scholar. But this knowledge is not inheritance through blood. This knowledge is not inheritance through blood. Rather, this knowledge is a prophetic inheritance that's taken through striving and studying and going out and seeking teachers and going out and seeking gatherings and being in the presence of scholars. This is how uh, this post is obtained. So Sayyid Muhammad, the author of this great book, he, he was not given the post of his father just because he was the son of Sayyid Alam. No. Right? The scholars only gave him that post because he was qualified for that post. For if he wasn't, for if he <coughs> wasn't qualified enough for that post, he wouldn't have ever been given that post. Right? He wouldn't have ever been given that post. And this is something, this is a criterion. Right? We don't need to expand upon it. You know when we're given principles, like for example in maths, Maths is a very mathematical, scientific subject. You're given a criterion and you base <coughs> all the other sums upon that criterion. Isn't that right? right? You've been given a criterion, you base everything upon that. You don't have to be navigated through each and every sum. Like one of my friends, Hafiz Nisar, he said to me, uh, when we were speaking about how children learn how to read the Quran, and he gave a beautiful example. He said to me, he said, you know when people learn how to drive a car, they don't really drive up every single road in the British Isles, do they? I said, no. He said, they drive up a few roads with an instructor, and then when they're competent, they go for their test, and that's it, they'll be able to drive. We need such instructors teaching our children Quran that they instruct them through a few juz, and then they are competent enough to get through the rest themselves. Right? They are competent enough to get through the rest themselves. So, what's important is uh, this rule. We take the rule and we take the criteria. Right? Is that people are given posts because of qualifications. 
No one is given a post in Islam because of lineage. No one is given a post in Islam because of lineage. And subhanAllah, we have the greatest example of that in those who are after the Prophet Who was the representative of the Messenger of Allah straight after him? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Right? Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu represented the Messenger of Allah after him. Why? Because he was the most qualified person after the Prophet Then it was Sayyidina Umar. Why? Because he was the most qualified person after Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Then it was Sayyidina Usman. Why? Because he was the most qualified person after Sayyidina Umar. Then Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Why? Because he was the most qualified person after Sayyidina Usman radiallahu anhu. So people are given posts due to qualifications, right? They are not given posts due to lineages. For if anyone was to be given a qualification upon lineage or a post upon lineage, then the family of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have inherited, represented him after him passing away from this world sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 